Whether you're playing Crossout for the first time or you're a veteran player, radiators and coolers play an integral part within the game. In this video, we will break down the differences between these modules and we'll see why these parts are essential to so many builds in Crossout. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, I'm TCS23 with Crossout Basics, and this is my guide to cooling modules for Crossout. To start things off, let's head over to the tech tree, which is the best place to see all the primary parts and weapons that Crossout has to offer. This can be found under Factions, then the tech tree, then select Hardware, and either scroll to the right, or you can click Coolers here. Now, as of this recording, there are five parts that fall under the category of cooling modules, and they can be divided into two groups, radiators and coolers. Before we discuss the differences between the two, let's start by quickly reviewing each item. The first part is the R1 Breeze. This is a common part that can be crafted from the engineer's faction, and it consumes one energy. It has a durability of 45 points, and if we divide its weight by its durability, we get a durability to weight ratio of 0.7. Its primary function is to increase the amount of time before a weapon overheats by 25%. Next up is the R2 Chill. This is a rare part that can be crafted from the engineer's faction and it requires one energy to run. In fact, all the modules that we'll be reviewing in this video require one energy to run. Now, the R2 Chill has a durability of 126 points and a durability to weight ratio of 1.0. With an increase of power score and rarity comes a 50% increase before a weapon overheats and 29% specifically for shotguns. Now this wasn't always the case with shotguns. In fact, a number of changes went into effect with regard to cooling modules. And if you're interested in the specifics, I'll leave a link to that article in the description below. Moving on, we have the CS Tamir. This is a rare part that can be crafted from the engineer's faction. It has a durability of 63 points, which is fairly low, but the good news is that it has the same durability to weight ratio as the R2 Chill, so there's no loss in efficiency. The CS Tamir increases the cooling rate of weapons by 60%. Moving up to epic quality, we have the RN Seal, which can be crafted from the Nomads faction. The RN Seal has the thinnest profile of all these modules, a durability of 77 points, and a durability to weight ratio of 1.2. This radiator increases the time before a weapon overheats by 70% and 38% for shotguns. But there's more. When your vehicle reaches speeds of 80 kilometers or above, the bonus is increased up to 30% more. The last item on the list is the Shiver, which can be crafted from the Lunatics faction. It has a durability of 115 points, along with a durability to weight ratio of 1.19. The shiver increases cooling of weapons to 85%, and the bonus efficiency can be increased an additional 45% when you are at a complete stop. Now that we have that covered, let's briefly discuss what makes radiators different from coolers. One thing to understand is that there are two aspects to firing a weapon with a heating threshold. The first phase, or the firing phase, happens when a weapon starts shooting. And the second, or non-firing phase, begins, you guessed it, when a weapon stops firing. Together, these two phases make up what I call the cooling cycle. Adding a radiator to this cycle will apply a cooling effect to the firing phase, which will increase the time it takes before a weapon overheats. On the other hand, when you add a cooler to your build, it will apply its effect to the non-firing phase, which will decrease the time it takes for a weapon to cool off. Another way to look at it is that radiators lengthen the firing phase, while coolers shorten the non-firing phase. One thing that's important to remember too is that not all weapons in the game have a cooling cycle, or in other words, a heat-based threshold. The best way to determine if a weapon has a heating threshold is by looking for the stat bar that says time to overheating. If this bar is not present, it means that it's a reload based weapon. Once you find an applicable weapon that you want to use, the next question might be, which cooling module should you use? A radiator or a cooler? Well, that depends on several factors, but the basic idea is that you want a module that will give you the best ratio of firing to non-firing. 
We'll get into how to calculate these ratios in just a minute, but for now, let's start by looking at two weapons that most new players will have access to, the vector machine gun and the sledgehammer shotgun. The first thing we need to do is get our baseline cooling cycle for each weapon. The top timer here represents the firing phase. The next timer is the cooling phase, and the bottom timer is the complete cooling cycle. Let's begin with the vector machine gun. Now let's get our baseline for the sledgehammer. Okay, so the vector has an overall cooling cycle of 6.3 seconds, and the sledgehammer's cooling cycle is 3.8 seconds. Now that we have our baseline numbers, let's convert these into a ratio. To find out the percentage of each phase, all we have to do is take our firing phase numbers, divide them into the total, and then multiply them by 100. This gives us a firing phase of 60% for the vector and 23% for the sledgehammer. The remaining percentages for each weapon are 40% and 77% respectively. These numbers will act as our benchmarks going forward, so that way we can compare how each module improves these ratios. Let's begin by adding the cheapest module on the list, the R1 Breeze. According to its stats, it should increase the firing phase for all heat-based weapons by 25%. So let's test it out. Okay, so let's compare the vector's numbers first. The baseline, or original firing phase, was 3.81 seconds, which made up 60% of the cooling cycle. Adding the R1 Breeze increased this phase to 4.51 seconds. Taking this new number, we divide it into our new total and multiply it by 100, and that gives us a new ratio of 63% and 37% which is a firing phase increase of 3%. Now let's look at the sledgehammer. The baseline firing phase was 0.86 seconds, which made up 23% of its cooling cycle. Adding the R1 Breeze increased this phase to 1.11 seconds. Taking this new number, we divide it into our new total again and multiply it by 100, and that gives us a new ratio of 27 and 73 which is a firing phase increase of 4%. Now that we have that covered, you might still be wondering if this module actually gives each weapon a 25% increase to their firing phase. And well, the results may surprise you. Let's check out the vector first. In order to find out what the percentage change is, we take the new firing phase value and subtract it from the original one. Then we divide the answer back into the original value and multiply it by 100, and that actually gives us an increase of 18% instead of 25. Now let's look at the sledgehammer. Using the same process, we calculate the numbers, and that leaves us with a firing phase increase of 29%. Now even though these numbers are different from what the stats say they should be, everything is relative in this game, so I wouldn't stress too much about these discrepancies. Now with that being said, there are four more cooling modules that have a considerable amount of complexity to them, especially since these parts can be fused for more efficiency along with additional perks that come with the epic modules. So what I've decided to do is test these parts ahead of time and share the results with you here. That way you can decide for yourself what module would be best suited for your build. So let's check out those numbers and then afterward we'll wrap up the video.
Well, that will conclude my guide to cooling modules in Crossout. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, please leave a like and also let me know in the comments below if this video helped you out in any way. Other than that, I'll see you here next time on Crossout Basics.